presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, Remote Creation Best Practices. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Before we get started, if you have always wanted to know if you could build a presentation at home and then use it at church, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. This is one of those questions I answer over and over and over again over in the ProPresenter users group that I run along with Renewed Vision. So, some people want to just make it and it just shows up magically and, well, maybe in the future they'll have something like that. But as of right now, there are other ways that you can do it. So I thought that we'd go over just some of the best practices that you should employ when creating presentations remotely. First thing is you should know that even if your church only has one seat of ProPresenter, that doesn't mean that you have to take the presentation computer home. It doesn't mean that you're out of luck. No, one thing that's great about ProPresenter is you can download the free version of ProPresenter and it's fully um, able to do everything that you can do in the registered version, except if you tried to present with it, it would put a watermark up at the time of presentation. So what that means is you can create remotely, export your presentations, your playlist, whatever, and then import those at church. And when you do that onto the presentation computer, there will not be a watermark. The watermark is only added at the time of presentation if the computer that's presenting does not have a registered license. So that's first thing. Second thing is Mac and Windows, it's cross compatible. So if you're a Windows person and you've got a Windows computer at home and at church they have a Mac, no problem. Just make sure you have the same fonts um, and make sure that you have uh, the output screen set to the same resolution. That brings me to uh, thing number three. Make sure that you create a placeholder screen that's the same resolution as your output screen for ProPresenter at church. So that way you can get a sense of how everything's fitting. You use the same font. You can tweak things appropriately so that it should transfer over nice and easily. Um, now, all this is assuming that what you're doing is you're creating at a different location. You export it. Um, so if we head over to my computer, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. You go to File, Export. And in order to export just a single presentation, I would recommend you use Presentation Bundle because that will include any media in there. If you don't have any media in a single presentation, you know, in a single song, in the sermon notes, what have you, then no big deal. Um, the other thing is you can export the playlist. Now, exporting the playlist will export everything for a given week, and that's probably what you're going to do more often than not. Now, when you export the playlist, it will ask you, first off, to give it a name, and secondly, should you include the media with the presentations? I would always say yes with that. Um, I'd also, just as a backup, just in case something funky happens, take a copy of the media with you on a thumb drive or use uh, Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or however you want to connect these two computers. Do it that way. So that's how you would export the presentation. To create a... Um, placeholder screen, which I talked about just a second ago, go to screens and then configure screens and just make sure you probably won't have all these screens here. Just go here and go down to um, new placeholder and select the appropriate resolution. If your resolution isn't listed there, you know, let's say you have an LED wall. Chances are at church you might have one, but you won't have one at home. 
if you do have an LED wall at home, maybe we should talk about you partnering financially with me because those things are expensive. No, just joking. Anyway, um, then you can go to custom size and put in the appropriate resolution there. So that's the second thing. There is another method, though, um, one that I haven't mentioned thus far, and that is to use remote desktop software, uh, virtual network software to remote into the computer at church. A lot of people swear by this method because you're doing everything on the computer that you're actually presenting on. So when you're done, you know it's all there, you save it, maybe you shut down ProPresenter, start it back up just to double check, better safe than sorry, and it's there. The downside of doing that is the computer at church has to be on. If someone turns it off by mistake, then you can't access it. Uh, another downside is um, there will be some latency, so it won't be as fast as doing it in person, but it'll probably save you the time of driving to church unless, you know, like you're the pastor and you live in the parsonage right next door. That would be the exception, but let's say you live 15 minutes away from church, it's probably going to save you the 30-minute round trip plus unlocking the building and all that craziness. So that's another way to do it. So if you find that you want to make a presentation remotely, you can do it one of those two ways, either with your own installation of ProPresenter. Remember, it's Mac and Windows now, and they're virtually identical couple of small things that almost no one knows I do just because I do this so much or you could do the remote desktop software like uh, team viewer or uh, go to my computer I guess that's still one or some other solution uh, just whatever works best for you if you like this content I bet you'd like my pro presenter pro presenter 7 quick start course and I'll tell you what I just Re, uh, recorded this just a few weeks ago because of ProPresenter 7.5. So it's all updated and I made it with the thought of absolute beginners in mind. So if that's something that looks like it would be great for you, then head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from trinitydigitalmedia.com and churchtechu.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.